enter into an agreement, and I'm not sure what the price tag of that agreement is. And it's, I guess it's up to this body to decide if you have concerns about that. If you don't have concerns about that, then obviously you can stand up and say, yes, I have some concerns about that, because I read an article in the, in the, uh, from the Wuben Daily Chronicle, um, and the Wuben Council supported um, this agreement, and they, they talked about a 10% surcharge. They talked, they, they approved that. They approved that uh, the town of Wilmington would have to go into an, an agreement to open up the Wuben Street Bridge, a written agreement, um, and that the town, they would have to give a notice to the town of Wilmington, a uh, seven day notice, and then shut us off if they had problems within their system. I have concerns about that. I don't know if they'll be ironed out with the board. I don't know how the board feels about that. I just found out about it yesterday, and I was very disappointed to find this out yesterday, the day before a town meeting, and then have this article. So in interest of being able to move forward and allow town council to be able to no negotiate with Olin and with the city of Woburn, I'll, I'll vote in favor of it, but I have to make this body aware and the residents aware that it could mean a cost to you, and, and it's not really covered in this article, and I'm concerned about that. Um, I will do my best to bring forward any information and to persuade my board members to come forward with any information, and maybe it needs to come back to town meeting, and maybe the town manager can, can um, explain to us if it will, if it's gonna cost as far as a 10% surcharge to enter into an agreement with Wuburn for MWRA water. MWRA water is expensive enough then to have to pay a 10% surcharge on top of that as the city of Woburn um, voted eight to nothing. Um, I believe it was Thursday night and it was in the Friday paper. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Just for clarification, Mr. Wood, if you could, the, the surcharge has come up a, a, a couple of times. Just if you could clarify what the agreement yes, I, is. I'd like to address that. I think there's um, some confusion on what we're talking about here. This agreement before us tonight is to allow Wilmington to build a pipeline through the city streets of Woburn and for, to give permission for the selectmen to sign this agreement. The agreement that Suzanne spoke to and other folks uh, tonight, I believe Representative Maselli, is an agreement to purchase water this summer so that uh, we do have enough water to meet the demands uh, for 2006. There is talk of a surcharge and that the ability to shut us off if they have an emergency in their town. Thank you. Further discussion? Anyone that, that hasn't spoken on, on the issue yet? Okay, I'm gonna go Mrs. Deck. Hi, yes, I'd like to ask um, the uh, town manager, uh, why is the word uh, eminent domain in this here article, um, those real estate interests? I was wondering, are you proposing taking anyone's property, or, or is the city of Wuben doing it? No, we, we're not. It's standard language that's prepared by uh, town council uh, to cover any eventuality. But any kind, if if there needed to be uh, an eminent domain, it would have to do with with simply an easement. So we're we're really going. We've we've had uh, positive discussions with all of the property owners, oh, okay. and there there shouldn't be a problem. And and just to Mr. Murray, if I may, just to clarify further what, what Mike is saying, again, the um, agreement that was signed by the, or that was authorized by the Wuben City Council the other day is the same agreement, uh, essentially, that we've had with Wuben for the last several years. There's a new administration. The, this particular mayor wanted it to be um, essentially endorsed or ratified by, uh, by his city council. In Burlington, for example, they, they send us back a letter of agreement. So it's, uh, it depends upon the community as to which um, activity they, they take in terms of executing that agreement. Re regardless of what the charge is for the water, the bill is handed to Olin, and Olin pays the bill. Pays the, bill. the town of Wilmington does not pay for any purchase of outside water and has not paid for any purchase of outside water since this issue was, uh, since what, 2002 or three, 2003?
Well, thank you. I'm in support of the article. I just didn't want to see any landowner lose out. Thank you. Mr. Banda? Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move the question. Okay. Is there a second? second. Motion's made and seconded. We're voting to end debate and give the maker of the motion up to 10 minutes if uh, he should so choose. Everybody clear on what we're voting on? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. No. Voted. Mr. Kyra was the maker of the motion, if you should so choose. I, I think that all has been said that needs to be said. I would uh, urge you to, to give us the opportunity to provide for um, a potable water source in an emergency and vote favorably on this particular article. Thank you. This requires a two-thirds uh, try a voice vote first. All those in favor of Article 22, as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Voted and done so unanimously. Mr. Stewart, Mr. Moderator, Mr. McDonald, I'd like to uh, bring this up for reconsideration. Okay, and you voted obviously in the prevailing side since it was unanimous. Hold on a second. Is there a second? Is there a second? Okay, motion's made and seconded. Discussion, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. Um, quite frankly, if the town didn't have to pay any money for this project, why is there language requesting a transfer from available funds? The other um, concerns I have, um, I'd like to get some answers to some questions. Maybe Mr. Woods can answer um, if Woburn has any wells online that get mixed in with their um, MWRA water. They do? The question, Mr. Woods, is the, the, the water that we would be buying through this agreement from MWRA, is there water from the Wuben public supply that's mixed with that water, I think is the question. The agreement that the people have voted on this evening this is article. strictly M MWRA. Strictly MWRA water. That's correct, from the Bob and Rev's water. Thank you. So how can we be sure that there are no interconnections? It doesn't make sense that Woburn has two separate systems. I, I don't really trust that. And they've made movies about Woburn, about people dying because of cancer, because of contaminants in their water. I think you people are making a huge mistake if you vote for this. What I would suggest you do is vote against it and compel the manager to go to Oland, take this money, and combine it with, say, state money and buy the Sharapa property for future um, well development. You're making a huge mistake, and quite frankly, I don't believe Olin is going to pay the entire bill. It sounds like they're going to be paying for four and a half million dollars. What happens if they hit ledge? What happens if the construction costs go up? You people, trust me, are going to get hammered. Thank you. Mr. Kyra? Just to make it clear that, that an article, as folks know, uh, gives a broad um, overview of what could be offered, but the specific motion that I offered did not ask to take any money from available funds. The article does give that, give that notice, but the specific motion, which the uh, moderator has, said that the uh, management board of selectmen I hereby authorized to acquire by purchase, uh, gift, or eminent domain such title interest, including fear or lesser interest. So we're not. We're not looking um, to do uh, anything in terms of uh, specifically going after available funds. We're looking to acquire uh, the money for this process as a gift, and that arrangement has been worked out with Olin. Further discuss anyone who hasn't spoken? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I had a question. Uh, Richard Grinder from uh, 451 Middlesex. Uh, a number of years ago, um, there was a water plan put out, and in that it stated that the town would be expected to pay roughly uh, $5 million just to get into MWRA. The uh, pipeline that you're setting up now that we just voted on, uh, that'd be nice, we'll have a connection to MWRA but if we need to turn this on, who will pay the, the entry fee? I understand that's gone from $5 million 
up to eight million dollars. Is it expected that Olin is going to agree to carry our water, so to speak, for the rest of the uh, foreseeable future? Thank you. Mr. Carr? Uh, and I'll also rely with your permission, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Woods, but the, the entry fee, as you've referred to, um, has to do with, with becoming a permanent member of the MWRA. If the town is going to go in that direction, this body has to vote to do that. Uh, certainly, our intention would be uh, to go after uh, Olin or any, any responsible party that, that we deem is responsible for uh, having created the problems uh, in our well fields. But um, Mr. Woods can add to that if he thinks he, he Mr. needs Mr. Woods? To. I believe that adequately addresses the question. Okay, thank you. Mr. Forrest. Yes, I'd like to move the question. Uh, we've had just three speakers, Mr. Forrest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I had done earlier on this. And, uh, was that on, on the, yes, he did. Yes, he, he got a second from right the gentleman there. back there in the baseball hat. Yes. Yeah. So further discussion, I'm going to allow to be consistent with my previous decision, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. Quite frankly, if no money is going to be needed from this town, this language should be taken out of here. And if Olin is going to pay for it, this should be language specific to that put into this article so we don't get hammered again. Say, oops, we didn't put it in there. Now Olin doesn't want to pay for it. Would Mr. Carr be willing to eliminate this language and put in the language that specifically says Olin will pay for it? Mr. Carr. Uh, no. This, what this article does is it, it authorizes the Board of Selectmen to enter into a municipal agreement. The intermunicipal agreement will be between us and the town of Woburn. The agreement to pay for the construction of the pipeline is between the town of Wilmington and uh, Olin. I can assure you that the Board of Selectmen is only going to support an intermunicipal agreement with Woburn um, if they're satisfied with the arrangement with Owen. So putting that into this article would not really have any force of law. The article was constructed with the assistance of the uh, town council, and it enables the town of Wilmington through its board of selectmen and water and sewer commission and town manager to uh, enter into an agreement to establish this emergency pipeline. And that's, that's the only intent of this. Beyond that is where you have your agreement with Olin, that'll be formalized by this group, um, with officials from Olin to construct the pipeline itself. But what I'm hearing is it will be formalized. There's nothing in writing now. There's nothing concrete. They could walk away from this, and these people are going to be stuck with this. And I think everybody knows here that the selectmen in past years have acted contrary to the will of the people. We yeah. actually have an, we Mr. Actually Mr. Have an agreement. Hold on. Hey, Mr. McDonald has a floor. One second, Mr. Carr. The, the selectmen have acted contrary to the um, will of the people, and I would uh, urge everybody here today, don't rely on the selectmen. Don't rely on Olin here. If this was, was going to be set in concrete, there should be some specific language that compels them to have to act according to the will of the people in a responsible way. And we continue to be hammered in taxes, driving elderly people out of this town. And I'm nervous about the fact that Woburn still has wells on this system, and we haven't seen any plans of their uh, water, water system here. So I don't, I don't trust that any of their water isn't being mixed in with the MWRA. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that um, if they're uh, hydrants and all of that are interconnected, um, that we can be assured of that. And quite frankly, there could be residual of chemicals that have been causing deaths in that town. So I, I hope you vote against this. Mr. Coggan? I'm going to move the question. Okay, I, I don't see anybody else looking to speak at this point, so maybe we can accomplish two goals with, at the same time here. There's no anybody else that was interested in speaking. Seeing no one, let's take the vote. I'll withdraw that. Great, thank you. We're on article number 22, Mr. 
uh, McDonald's motion to reconsider Article 22. If you want to reconsider and bring the vote back to the floor, as the main motion, you should vote yes. If you're happy with the unanimous vote that took place a minute ago, you should vote no. Those in favor of reconsidering Article 22 signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. Defeated. Thank you. We're on Article number 19. To see if the town will vote in accordance with the provisions of General Laws Chapter 40, Section 4A, to authorize the Board of Health to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with one or more other governmental units for the purpose of providing public health services pursuant to the authority of the Board of Health in accordance with an inter intermunicipal mutual aid agreement to be entered into between the town and various government units or take any other action related thereto, Mr. Erickson. Mr. Moderator, I move that in accordance with the provisions of General Law Chapter 40, Section 40, 4A, the town, the town manager with the approval of the Board of Selectmen and upon recommendation of the Board of Health be hereby authorized to enter into an intermunicipal agreement for a term of 25 years or less with one or more governmental units for the purposes of providing, for the purpose of providing public health services. So your motion just includes the term of 25 years or less, which is different than the booklet? Yes. Great, thank you. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motions made and seconded. Finance Committee recommendation. Approval discussion. Mr. Erickson. Mr. Moderator, this uh, has been recommended by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health that all cities and towns in the Commonwealth pass an article such as this so that they can then make intermunicipal agreements with neighboring towns to do effectively what police and fire units do, and that is to be able to respond across the borders of towns into other towns that request services. Thank you. Further discussion? We're ready for the vote. Mr. Dorensis is walking this way, I assume. Mr. Durensis points out that the ch there is a, a second change in, in the motion that gives the uh, town manager with approval of the Board of Selectmen and upon the recommendation of the Board of Health as opposed to just the authorization of the Board of Health. I apologize. Okay. Further discussion? Ready for the vote? Those in favor of Article 19 signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Vote it. We're on article number 37. <laughs> to see if the town will vote to see to see if the town will vote to see if the town will vote to amend the Wilmington zoning map and the associated zoning bylaws of the town of Wilmington by voting to rezone residents 20 to residence 10 and amend the delineation of the zoning boundary for the following parcels of land located at 2830, 32, 34, 36, and 38 Glen Road and describe parcels of land as listed on the assessor's records as map 66, parcels 20, 21, 21A, 22, 23, and 24 to make these parcels conforming to the area requirements for these parcels or do anything in relation thereto. Is there a motion? Ms. Holland. Mr. Moderator, I move to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws as is contained in, in the booklet. It is in the booklet, thank you. Uh, I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Motion's made and seconded. Finance Committee recommendation. There's approval. Planning Board recommendation. There's approval. Discussion. Ms. Holland. Um, very briefly, Sen, first of all, I want to thank everyone that's still here at this late hour. I appreciate your uh, service to the town by participating in this process. Um, very simply, I live at 28 Glen Road, um, and I would like to rezone my property, which is a fully conforming R20 lot that's divided as an R10 R20 lot, 
along with uh, five other parcels, uh, which are my neighbor's lots, that are zoned R20 presently, but they do not conform at all to the zoning regulations in uh, lot size or uh, frontage for an R20 zone, and basically move the R10 line to the back of our lots. Uh, right now, presently, if you look at the map, the R10 line goes down the middle of Glen Road, and I'm just moving it to the back of our property. Um, that's all. Further discussion? Uh, Representative Maselli? I wasn't at the public hearing. The question I have is, by doing this, how many lots are you creating? And how big are they? Uh, on my property, I would possibly be creating one other lot. I have 200 feet of frontage. I would need 100 feet of frontage for each lot. Um, at an R10 zone, one lot would be at least R10, maybe 15,000 square feet. The other would be about 30,000 square feet. And all of these lots have frontage on Glen Road? Yes, both right. lots would have frontage on Glen Road. So if I follow you, in essence, all you're doing is creating one more lot than exists right now. Well, it'd be subdivided from a um, 40,000, 40, uh, 5,000 square so foot lot would be my property. Yes, yeah. one lot. So how many lots do you end up with? Two, two. Two, period. Two, period. Okay. Can I ask another question? Sure. Usually someone gets up when they're doing that and says, you know, I've got a kid who's going to move into the house or what have you. Any combination. Combination. My life circumstances have changed recently. I'm a single parent now. My son is 21. I'm not sure whether I'm going to actually subdivide the lot and build a smaller place for myself, sell the bigger house, or keep the bigger house and sell the lot to finance my lot yard cleanup. Thank the you. property's too big for me. Mrs. Deck? Did you say you have a 5,000 square feet lot? No, I do not. I have a 48,000 square foot lot that's an R10, R20 zone right okay, now. Okay, so when you do receive the R10, mm -hmm. what is the um, frontage for an R10? R10 has to have 100 feet of frontage. R20 has to have 125 feet of frontage. Okay, now what about the 5,000 square feet? I don't have 5,000 square feet. Oh, I misunderstood you. I so thought you said... I would make a lot of 10 to 15,000 square feet, 100 feet of frontage, and the other lot would be about 30, 35,000 square feet with 100 feet of frontage. Well, all I can say is good for you. Thank you. Further discussion? We're ready for the vote. This requires a two-thirds. We'll try a voice vote. All those in favor of Article 37 is presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no voted and done so unanimously. I drew Article 36, which was the article that we had taken up, Mr. Peterson and Mr. Castellano, they asked me to take them up 35 and 36 uh, contingently, so just to show you 36 was in the bowl. We've already acted on that. We're in article number 27. I move that the oh, town... Uh, one second, Mrs. Hooper, I need to read it first. One, one second, oh, thank I'm you. Sorry. Article 27, to see if the town will vote to amend the bylaws of the inhabitants of the town of Wilmington revised as follows. Proposed changes are in italics. Chapter 2, Town Meetings. Section 1, the annual town meeting for the election of town officers shall be held on the fourth Saturday in April of each year. Section 2, no change. Section 3, all matters to be considered under the warrant for the annual town meeting except the election and determination of such matters as are required by law to be elected or determined by ballot shall be considered at the adjournment of such meeting to be held at 10.30 a.m. on the Saturday following the election of town officers in the year for which the warrant is drawn. The warrant for every annual town meeting shall contain a statement by which the meeting is adjourned to such time for such purpose or take any other action related thereto. Mrs. Hooper. I move that the town vote to amend the bylaws of the inhabitants of the town of Wilmington revised 
as follows. And Mrs. Hooper, does your motion contain it, uh, read as is in the booklet? Yes, it does. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion is seconded. Finance Committee recommendation is approval. Discussion, Ms. Hooper. The intent of this article is to move the date of the annual town meeting to one week later so that the town meeting will never fall during school vacation week. Many families go away during this week and I often hear people bemoan the fact that they'd like to be present at town meeting but can't be because this is an opportunity for them to vacation with their families when their children had the week off. The election of the town officers may still come during school vacation week, but people can vote by absentee ballot before they go away, so it should not affect the results of the election. Unfortunately, we cannot vote on any of the town meeting warrant articles by absentee ballot, so moving the date of the town, week, town meeting to the week after the school vacation should make it possible for many more people to attend and participate. I have researched through 2018 what the town meeting dates would be if we passed this warrant article. Some years the town meeting would fall on the fifth Saturday of April, if there are five Saturdays, and on other years it would be the first Saturday in May. More than 30 people signed my petition when I only needed 10, and when I asked them to sign, I did not get a single negative reaction. In fact, the common reaction was it was a great idea. We should have done it long ago. I hope everyone who agrees on this warrant article will agree. Thank you. Further discussion? All right, Mr. Segal. As a, as a parent of school-aged children, I, I uh, will definitely vote in favor of this article. Mrs. Deck? Yes. Uh, with all due respect to um, Barbara, but uh, I talk to many of uh, the mothers that are not here today, and they had no intention to be here today. They're home with their children. And I can remember when my three little girls were growing up, I had no intention of spending eight, nine, ten hours and leaving them. So most of the time, we don't attend. In fact, most of the people on my street, a lot of them are older too, they're out doing yard work today. They had no attention of attending the town meeting. So if it's passed, it's passed. And if it's not, it's not. But let's tell it like it is. Thank you. Further discussion? Could I speak Could on that? Uh, is there anyone who hasn't spoken yet? Yes, ma'am, and then here, yes. Um, Joan Grady, 24 Sheridan Road. I would like to speak in favor of this. Um, I teach in the public schools, and while it is true that many people who have children would not be here, they either have babysitting issues or sports issues, there are still many who would be here, but because of the constraints of school vacation, and sometimes you don't, during a busy vacation week, get travel plans that necessarily would allow you to get back in time. I think it would open the democratic process to more people um, who might choose to be here, and I would support this. Ann Rich, Allen Park Drive. I am in support of this, but my quest comment is the woman who said babysitting issues. When my children were little, we always came to town meeting, and the Girl Scouts or an era someone from girls from the, the intermediate schools or the high school would be in there providing babysitting services for the children of the attendees at the town meeting. Don't they do that any longer? If they don't, they should. There should be some group looking for civic uh, community service activities who would be willing to babysit the children of the attendees at town meeting. A challenge for our community service leaders in Wilmington. Yes? Mr. Ayako. Uh, first, I'd like to say that I'm in support of changing the uh, date um, out a little bit. It might give a little bit more participation in the town meeting. 
Um, but a couple hundred more maybe. You still have the issue that you have to be, you have to be here eight, nine, ten hours as a lady over here alluded to. I think it goes further than just changing out a week. I mean, that starts the process. I think there's other changes that have to be made with the format of the town meeting and its duration. Maybe split it up into two days. I don't know. But just by putting the date out is not going to get uh, 23,000 people to participate. Ms. Ms. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just have one thing to say. Look around. I don't think it can hurt. <laughs> Further discussion? Mr. Goggin? I think one other advantage, too, is it could uh, push the time of the meeting past, um, obviously, things like Passover and Easter are variable, and having it a little later in April, I'm not sure how exactly the formula works, but be less of a chance, like we did with the town election, of having it in the middle of Easter weekend. For the discussion, We're ready for the vote, Mr. Zupa. If I really had my brothers, I would have liked to have made it a weekday night, but I knew that wouldn't pass. <laughs> okay, we're ready for the vote. We're voting on Article Number 27 as presented by Mr. Zupa. Those in favor of Article 27, signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, say no. Voted. We're on article number 33, which is on page 37. To see if the town will vote to authorize the selectmen to enter into an agreement, the terms of which shall be determined by the selectmen, to sell, convey, or otherwise dispose of all or part of the following described parcels, following a determination made by the town manager that the land is not needed for any municipal purpose, and in accordance with Chapter 3, Section 16 of the Bylaws of the Inhabitants of the Town of Wilmington Revised, and any other applicable law. The parcel located on Everett Avenue, described in the assessor's records as Map 55, Parcel 83, or take any action related thereto. Is there a motion, Mr. Little? Yes, uh, Robert Little, 15, Everett Ave. I'd like to uh, pull the article at this time. You're going to withdraw, you want to make uh, withdraw it? Withdraw You want withdraw to withdraw it. it? Yes. Okay, a motion to withdraw. Is there a second? Okay. Discussion? Okay, those in favor of withdrawing Article 33 signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Voted. We're on Article Number 32. To see if the town will vote to remove certain restrictions as contained in the two deeds from the town of Wilmington to Forrest and Dame dated December 15, 1980 and recorded at the Middlesex North District Registry of Deeds at Book 2467, page 452, and date May 29, 1973 and recorded at the Middlesex North District Registry of Deeds as Book 2072, page 280, and to, to further all the town to establish a price relative to the removal of said restrictions. The above reference properties are more particularly described as follows. The land as bounded, as you can see on Skigliano and Agunquit and Blackstone Streets, containing 10,000 square feet, being shown as lots 42, 43, 90, and 91 on a plan entitled Plan of Lots at Central Park, Wilmington, Mass., April 1908, scale 80 feet to an inch, James Adams, Civil Engineer, Old South Building, Boston, Mass., which plan is recorded at the Middlesex North District Registry of Deeds at Plan Book 25, Page 39, parcel two, a certain parcel of land on the westerly side of Hanover Road being shown as lots 94 through 99 inclusive on plan of lots in Wilmington, Mass. dated April 1908, James Adams, civil engineer, which plan is recorded at the Middlesex North District Registry of Deeds at plan book 25, page 39, together bounded and described as follows on Hanover Street and together containing 15,000 square feet more or less be all measurements more or less or however otherwise bounded and described on said plan. The above reference parcels one and two are a portion of lots 84 and 85 as shown on the town of Wilmington Assessor's Map 50 or take any, any other action related thereto. 
Mr. Peterson. Mr. Moderator, Attorney Robert Peterson, 314 Main Street, uh, for the petitioners, the estate of Forrest Dame. And Mr. Moderator, I would move to see if the town will vote to remove certain restrictions as contained in two deeds from the town of Wilmington. In the rest of the article, Mr. Moderator, uh, is exactly as it appears in the booklet. Great, I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion's made and seconded. Finance Committee recommendation, approval planning board recommendation, is approval town manager declaration of surplus on the restriction is yes and mr moynihan the fair market value that you have determined the restrictions to be worth the uh, lifting yes. of the restrictions excuse me uh, yes mr moderator the board of assessors has determined the fair market value for the release of these restrictions to be one hundred and eighty nine thousand one hundred one one eighty nine mr moynihan or one ninety eight one ninety eight one hundred one hundred ninety eight thousand one hundred mr peterson will you accept that as your main motion Yes, I will, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Discussion. Mr. Peterson. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, the Dane property on Scigliano, actually it's on Blackstone Street, contains uh, 50,000 square feet of land. It's located in an R20 zone. It currently contains an, uh, an auto repair uh, business, which Mr. Dame operated on the property for over 50 years. Uh, he passed away in July. Uh, that property can be subdivided into two conforming uh, lots of 25,000 square feet each in an R20 zone. Uh, the, each lot would have be fully conforming uh, for the dimensional requirements and the setback requirements for that zone. The reason this article is here is a portion of that property uh, was obtained by Mr. Dame back in the early 80s from the town of Wilmington and it contained certain deed restrictions um, which in order to be lifted, the town has determined those to be uh, a, a running interest in land. Uh, in order for those deeds restrictions to be lifted, uh, two things must happen. The town must declare the land surplus, uh, and the assessor must uh, establish a fair market price for that. And as you already heard, the town manager has declared uh, this property to be surplus, and the value as established by uh, Mr. Moynihan is acceptable to the petitioner. Further discussion? We're ready for the vote. Mrs. Deck. Uh, this here is an interesting uh, article. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. One hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars to uh, one ninety-eight. One uh, hundred ninety-eight thousand. To relieve them of what restrictions? And who owns this? Does the town own the property, mm -hmm. or does this Mr. Dane own the property? Mr. Carroll. The town doesn't own the property, but the town established a restriction. So the town owns a, a restriction, essentially, on the on the property. Uh, when when they bought the property from the town, bought two pieces of property from the town on two different occasions many many years ago, the town sold them the property with the restriction saying that they could not build on it. And so it's been it's been the position that the the town has taken, at least that I've taken since I got here in 1990, is that the town should not be a land bank. Many times the town would have done that, and then the petitioner would have come back and asked the town uh, to remove the restriction after having given them the land uh, at a very, very low price because it was restricted, and we stopped, we stopped that practice. Uh, as Mr. Peterson has indicated, he, uh, apparently the, the owners believe that uh, the established price is fair. They can build one lot right now, however, if, if we agree to remove the deed, uh, they can build a second lot. And for $198,100 coming to the town of Wilmington, I think it makes sense to uh, remove the deed and to have the town enter the benefit of that, uh, of that revenue. Okay, so what you're saying then basically is the town does not own this land. You sold this land to this individual uh, years ago? I think 1973 and 1980, were those the two dates? Yeah, there are two separate deeds, uh, Mr. Moderator, and the, the rationale behind uh, the town's position that they maintain an interest in the land, if may answer Mrs. Deck's question, is that Mr. Dane purchased those parcels from the town of Wilmington at the time on both of them for less than its fair market value. Therefore, the town's position is if you now want to make use of that parcel separate from your contiguous parcel, then we want to establish what we consider to be today's fair market value to do that. And I have discussed that matter 
uh, with Mr. Moynihan, although I may not agree 100% uh, with how we value the property. I think the, the process for uh, how it was done and the figure at, that he arrived at is fair. And if the petitioners want to make use of their property, which will be a fully conforming lot, they're going to have to pay that price. And they're aware of that. Oh, okay. The petitioners are aware of it, that they're going to pay 189 or whatever thousand dollars to lift restrictions off a property that the town of Wilmington told them many moons ago, you cannot build on this property. Now their property is extremely valuable. They're saying, which I think it's, was a great move on the town's part, to get 189000 out of this. And uh, you answered my question. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Sagal? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'd just like to ask the petitioner, how many additional building lots will be uh, garnered by uh, this ease of restrictions? One. I think I mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Sagal, that it would be the existing. Both lots will contain, I think one will contain 25,039 square feet. Uh, which is in 25% over the required in that area, and the other one will contain exactly 25,000. And the existing auto repair garage in the existing house will be torn down. Further discussion? We're ready for the vote. We're voting to authorize the town manager with the approval of Board of Selectmen to remove certain restrictions on the described parcel, Article 32, for the amount of $198,100. Okay. This requires two-thirds. We'll try a voice vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, say no. Voted. We're on article number 31. See if the town will vote to authorize the selectmen to enter into an agreement, the terms of which shall be, be as determined by the selectmen, to sell, convey, or otherwise dispose of all or part of the following described parcels, following a determination made by the town manager that the land is not needed for any municipal purpose, and in accordance with Chapter 3, Section 16 of the Bylaws of the Inhabitants of the Town of Wilmington Revised, and other applicable law. The parcel located on Garfield Avenue described in the assessor's records as Map 7, Parcel 110, or take any other action related thereto. Ms. Tompkins. Yes, Sharon Tompkins, 69 Forest Street. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I petition exactly as you stated. Great, I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded. Finance Committee recommendation. Approval, Planning Board recommendation. Is approval, Town Manager's declaration of surplus? Yes, surplus. Thank you. Um, Mr. Moynihan, the fair market value that the assessors have determined? Uh, yes, Mr. Moderator, the Board of Assessors has determined the fair market value of this parcel to be $38,000. $38,000. And Ms. Tompkins, do you accept $38,000 as part of your main mo your motion? I do, but I'm not sure I understand why it is so high. Okay. It's the, a 25 foot I, by about... I, I, just, I just need to make sure that... Actually, that there's not a whole lot of choice in this one. I just right. need to ask you. So <laughs> uh, $38,000 is the amount. Accepted. Discussion, Ms. Tompkins. No, I would accept it, but I would like to know how they come up with that. Mr. Moynihan? Uh, essentially, uh, at the public hearing, you indicated that um, you were going to use uh, this land to create a buildable lot uh, adjacent to the land that you have now. We said that it was a, a possibility, a far-reached possibility. At this point, we were trying to square off the land the land has a lot of ledge and everything else back right. there, so um, it's a 25 foot by about 120 or 25 feet, right. um, and it jets right through the middle of our property. Right. So using using the same the, the same logic though that this that this strip of land uh, essentially gives you the ability to create a buildable lot mm -hmm. uh, with land that you now own, and, and once again, uh, land in that area. A buildable lot would be about 200,000. This would constitute about 19% of that. So that's how we came up with that figure. Okay. Okay, further discussion? Y'all set, Ms. Tompkins? Yes, sir. This is uh, Article 31, map on map 7, one, uh, 110. I 
I can't seem to, I'm not sure if I can find 110. Yeah. Are you talking about this thing right here? This one right here? It's that little oh, tiny piece. Oh, I'm sorry. Piece. Okay. With the, with the lines on it, I didn't see it. Okay, I understand. Okay, Good. Okay, further discussion? We're ready for the vote. We're on article number 31, the amount of $38,000. This requires two-thirds. We'll try a voice vote. Those in favor of Article 31 signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Voted. We're in Article Number 34. To see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws and associated zoning map of the town of Wilmington by voting to rezone from residential 60 to residential 20, the following described parcel of land. A certain parcel of land together with the buildings thereon situated at 5 Factory Road in Wilmington, Middlesex County, Massachusetts, and being shown as lots 46A and 46B in a plan of 94 lots of land belonging to New City of Wilmington on the Boston and Lowell Railroad, belonged to Daniel Ayer and surveyed by J.G. Chase and G.W. Butterfield engineers. Said plan being recorded in the Middlesex North District Registry of Deeds Book of Plans 5, Plan 4 of the Southern Copies and being bounded and described as follows on Factory Street and Manufacturer Street containing in all according to said plan 51,672 square feet. For petitioner's title to lots 46A, see deed of Charles C. Clapp to Daniel B. Halliday and Dorothy Halliday dated April 20th, 1972 and recorded at the Middlesex North District Registry of Deeds in Book 2006, page 109. For petitioner's title to Lot 46B, see Deed of Daniel B. Halliday and Dorothy Halliday dated December 12th, 1989 and recorded at the Middlesex North Registry of Deeds at Book 5094, page 73. The above reference parcel is shown as parcel 4C and 4D on the Town of Wilmington Assessor's Map 27 do anything in relation there to is there a motion mr halliday mr moderator mr peterson attorney robert peterson 314 main street representing the petitioners daniel b halliday senior and daniel b halliday jr and i would move to see if the town of wilmington will vote to amend the zoning bylaws and associated zoning map of the town of wilmington by voting to rezone from residential 60 to residential 20 the following described parcel of land and mr moderator the description does not uh, read exactly as contained in the booklet uh, there were a couple of minor uh, housekeeping items relative to the running description of the property uh, for which the town engineer recommended changes uh, and for which I have previously, previously submitted to the moderator, but the parcel itself uh, is the same parcel as referenced in the booklet. I'll accept that as the main motion. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the changes that Mr. Peterson is referencing are matters of uh, you know, a percentage of a foot on a plan. It's, it does not alter the description of the parcel that you see before you. So I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion's made and seconded. Finance Committee recommendation. Planning Is approval Planning Board recommendation? Approval discussion, Mr. Peterson. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The Hallidays have owned this property, uh, which is on at the corner of Factory Street, Butters Row, uh, in Meadowbrook, uh, for 34 years. When they purchased it, when Mr. Halliday originally purchased it, it contained six separate uh, deeded parcels of land all in excess of a half acre. Uh, sometime between 1896 when this plan was recorded uh, in the current date, the zoning in that area changed uh, from which was the standard zoning of residential 10 under our only existing bylaws uh, at the time to residential 60. Uh, there isn't uh, at the present time, uh, Mr. Moderator, a residential 60 parcel uh, on that lot. Uh, any of you who have the handout uh, that the Hallidays handed out before the meeting uh, you can see uh, a proposed subdivision of their parcel, which would contain uh, two fully, it creates one additional lot uh, on the land owned by the both of them, uh, containing in excess of 20,000 square feet. And again, they would be fully conforming uh, R20 lots. This is the only uh, parcel of land in that area uh, that has not been uh, developed. And all of the parcels that were developed in that area, uh, none of them meet the R60 requirement. Uh, also on the handout, Mr. Chairman, if, you, if anybody in the audience has it, uh, pages three and four uh, contain, contain uh, condensed versions of the assessor's map showing all of the development in that area. Uh, and as you can see, very few, if any, of the parcels 
uh, meet the R60 requirements. Uh, there, were there have been recent subdivisions on Butters Row where the average lot size is half acre. Uh, there's been substantial residential development uh, by two separate developers on Elizabeth Drive um, and on Seneca Drive in the general vicinity of this parcel. All of these parcels were developed, uh, Mr. Moderator, under the R20 zone. And the, it, the Palladays would ask this, this body for the same consideration for development of this parcel as has existed with all of the abutting parcels uh, over the years. There's not a parcel in this area that meets the R60 requirement. Further discussion? Ready for the vote? This requires a two-thirds as well. I'll try a voice vote. Those in favor of Article 34 is presented signified by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Voted. On article number 29. To see if the town will vote to amend the, and revise chapter 592, section 12A, powers and duties of the manager on page 43 of the present town charter and bylaws of the inhabitants of the town of Wilmington that reads as follows. Section 12A, powers and duties of manager. He shall supervise and direct the administration of all departments, commissions, boards, and offices, except those mentioned in section two, three, and four, and shall appoint and may, subject to the provisions of chapter 31 of the general laws where applicable, remove the cemetery commissioners, water commissioners, board of health, Board of Public Welfare, Planning Board, Library Trustees, Trustees of Trust Funds, a Town Collector, a Town Clerk, a Town Treasurer, who may also act as Town Collector, a Board of Assessors of three members as here and after provided, a Superintendent of Streets, the Chief of Police and Police Officers, the Chief and members of the Fire Department, and such other officers and employees, including school janitors, as may be necessary to carry out the powers and duties imposed upon him or upon the town, either by this act or by other provisions of law. Officers and employees not subject to Chapter 31 of the general laws shall not be removed by the town manager except on 10 days' notice in writing, setting forth the cause of such removal. Delete the sentence that reads, he shall supervise and direct the administration of all departments, commissions, boards, and offices except those mentioned in Section 2, 3, and 4, and replace it with, he shall supervise and direct the administration of all departments, commissions, with the exception of the Conservation Commission, boards and offices except those mentioned in Section 2, 3, and 4, or take any other action related there too. Is there a motion, Mr. Iacco? I move that the town be authorized to petition the general court to enact a special act that would amend the town charter by amending section 12A, powers and duties of the manager as follows. He shall supervise and direct the administration of all departments, commissions, boards, and offices with the exception of the Conservation Commission and accept those mentioned in section two, three, and four. Also by amending section four, appointments by selectmen of the town charter by adding conservation commission after town council. Thank you, I'll accept that as the main motion. What Mr. Iocco has read, which is different from your booklet, is that he is proposing that the, um, that, that the town petition the general court to change the town charter to take the appointing authority of the conservation commission from the town manager and give that to the board of selectmen is what he's asking, okay? Any questions? Is there a second? Motion's made and seconded. Finance Committee recommendation? Disapproval, Planning Board recommendation? Disapproval, discussion, Mr. Iacco? Why not? Um, I'm not gonna ask why they disapprove. Uh, the powers and duties of the town manager were established July 5th, 1950. That's 56 years ago. Page 43 of the present town charter and bylaws of the inhabitants of the town of Wilmington. The role of the town manager has changed over the last six decades. One from more of a politician to more of a fiscal manager. There's a lot more people, a lot more money has to be managed. Uh, the town is much larger, involves a greater planning, budgeting, and finances. The roles are antiquated and do not ensure a democratic process. As committees are established, such as the Conservation Commission in 1964, which was after the powers and duties of the town, town manager were established, they automatically fall under the town manager's jurisdiction. The town residents are not being fairly represented as the appointments are being made, I believe. I believe Mr. Kyra as a town manager is doing an exceptional job. However, he's not gonna be there forever. Not all, not all of us are not gonna be here forever. 
provo proposed article will ensure that qualified conservation candidates are chosen for available commissions positions by the Board of Selectmen. This would ensure a fair representation of the Wilmington residents because we're the ones that vote the selectmen in. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Newhouse? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I think that there's a lot of reasons why uh, Wilmington is a desirable place to live and, and uh, by most accounts, we're a successful town. Uh, right at the top of the list, uh, I believe that two of the reasons are because the uh, folks in town, generally speaking, are fiscally conservative and people who show up to town meeting, uh, you've got to go quite a ways to convince people to spend money and I think that's one of the reasons why we find ourselves in, in really good shape. One of the other big reasons why I think we find ourselves in pretty good shape is because we, um, we're pretty limited in terms of the um, political process and the number of positions in town that it can affect. And the Board of Selectmen at this point uh, appoints a town manager, uh, town council, town accountant, and then some other uh, ad hoc committees along the way. Uh, but those three certainly are uh, three, three uh, positions which are very involved in the day-to-day -day needs of the town and, and operations of the town. And um, I just respectfully disagree with Mr. Ayako that that process needs any changes. I think it's worked very well for the town for many, many years now, and, and I'd like to stick with it. Thank you. Mrs. Deck? Thank you. With all due respect to uh, the author of this here article, it's very well written, and uh, I do disagree with this here uh, article. In fact, I don't think the town manager has enough power. He should be appointing the town council also. Thank you. Anyone who hasn't spoken that would like to speak? Seeing no one, Mr. Ayako. I, I want to re uh, respect and disagree with this uh, lady here. Um, the town manager, if you go through and read the article the way it was originally presented in the booklet, he really has power to hire and fire a lot of people in this town on his say. I think that needs to change because there are a lot of departments and I think there has to be more of a say on who gets hired and fired except for the, the decision of one person. Again, I believe he's doing a great job, but I don't think all those powers should be under one person. Thank you. Mr. Banda. Yes. James Banda, Seven Marie Drive. This charter has worked for over 50 years. There's an old saying, if it's not broken, don't change it. If you are going to change this, and please listen, the Board of Selectmen will appoint. Therefore, anybody who is going to be appointed by the Board of Selectmen is going to carry on the personal agenda of the Board of Selectmen. We have many, many residents in this town with qualified and good expertise to volunteer to sit on these boards. Leave it as it is and do not change it, please. Further discussion? Yes, Ms. Shukas. Yeah, Joanne Shukas, 7 Cedar Street. This has worked, like Jim said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I have had many discussions with Mr. Kyber. We don't always agree, but he does a darn good job. The system works. He does not work by himself. He does not overrule anyone. He confers with the selectmen and the other boards before he makes major decisions. No one has that kind of power. So what are we talking about here? The only major issue that has come up on all of these articles has been, for some reason, earmarked the Conservation Commission. Leave it alone. It works. Let's not vote this article and let's vote it down. We're ready for the vote? We're on article number 29. Everybody clear on what we're voting on? All those in favor of article 29 is presented signified by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Defeated. One more. 
We're on article number 16. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or borrow pursuant to any applicable statute the sum of $750 each, a total of $1,500, for the purpose of renewing under the authority of Section 9 of Chapter 40 of the General Laws as amended, the lease of Veterans of Foreign Wars Clubhouse for the purpose of providing suitable headquarters for the Nee Ellsworth Post 2458 of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. And B, the American Legion Clubhouse, Inc. in Wilmington for the purpose of providing suitable headquarters for the Wilmington Post 136 of the American Legion or, do any, or take any other action related thereto. Mr. Newhouse. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $1,500 be raised and appropriated from the fiscal 07 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the purpose of renewing under the authority of Section 9 of Chapter 40 of the general laws as amended the lease of the Veterans of Foreign Wars Clubhouse for the purpose of providing suitable headquarters for the Nee Ellsworth Post 2458 of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States, and the American Legion Clubhouse, Inc. in Wilmington for the purpose of providing suitable headquarters for the Wilmington Post 136 of the American Legion. Is there a second? second. Motions made and seconded. Finance Committee recommendation is approval. Discussion? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Voted. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the uh, warrant articles that are before you in your warrant. Thank you all very, very much. I know it's been a lengthy town meeting. Thank you all for participating in this process. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved, seconded. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Voted. Have a nice evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.